it is a number one malignancy in urogenital system and if you see the entire system of the body then this stands for second second means after lung cancer this is the most common cancer in male like bps it is also a disease of advanced age once the age of male is increasing the chance of cancer prostate increases it is very rare before 50 and by the age of 80 the 80 percentage of male might have cancer prostate the good thing about cancer prostate is even though it is very common the death by cancer prostate is less most of the time the patient dies due to other disease than cancer prostate only three percentage of, of a patient die due to cancer prostate risk factor as usual for any other cancers we are basically genetic risk factor and environmental still we, we we exactly don't know the 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 risk factor for cancer prostate but uh, there are some some factors which are associated with with high occurrence of cancer prostate number one is age if you are male and if the age is increasing advancing then it's, then the chance of cancer prostate increases family history if a male has has a you know history of cancer in his family especially if a father died due to cancer prostate around he has around 2.5 times higher chance of getting cancer if the brother died due to prostate cancer he has around 3.5 times higher higher chance of getting cancer prostate brca gene mutation so these are some some genetic uh, association uh, ethnicity it is less common in Asian population in compared to European populations, highest in Australia and Europe. Europe, okay, that could be some something related to genetics. Environmental factors, uh, just like diet. Those who consume more fatty diet, more red meat, and consume less amount of of fibers or or antioxidant, they have higher chance of getting cancer, prostate. Not only prostate cancer, other other cancer as well. And if they consume uh, food like uh, food containing vitamin A, vitamin C, E, selenium, and you know, uh, food containing omega omega three fatty acid like fish, you know, salmon, other fish containing omega three fatty acid, then they have a less chance of getting prostate cancer. Smoking. Smoking increases the risk of aggressive prostate cancer. Those who smoke, and if they if they uh, developed cancer prostate uh, it will be generally aggressive nature these are the risk factors associated with with cancer prostate see here increasing age usually uh, rare before 50 and uh, occurs after 60 to 70 years more common in in, in european population around 3.5 times higher chance of getting cancer if the brother had cancer prostate right BRCA gene mutation and other risk factors like diet. I will explain. And smoking. Obesity is also linked with cancer prostate, but not proven till now that much. But still, obesity, those who are obese, they have they have higher chance of getting cancer prostate pathology. I told you prostate comprises three components: 50% glandular component. 25% is muscular, 25% is fibrous. Out of these three, the cancer arises from gland. Okay, that's why 95% of cases you will find adenocarcinoma. So, prostate cancer basically means a cancer arising from the gland of the prostate, adenocarcinoma. If you see the zone of prostate, if you remember that zone, zonal anatomy, Part of prostate around the urethra is known as transition zone. Part of prostate tissue around this is actually duct is known as central zone, anterior fibromuscular area, and remaining huge anterolateral posterior part is peripheral zone. And the prostate usually arises from the peripheral zone around 70% to 75% cases, but it may also arise from transition zone very rarely arise from central zone so whenever we uh, see the biopsy of prostate under microscope we always uh, see the grading of prostate cancer and what is grading grading means it's a degree of differentiation 
in relation to normal tissue. That means if you are able to differentiate that it looks like prosthetic tissue, then we say, yes, it is well differentiated. But if you cannot differentiate it, it as a prosthetic tissue, then it is known as undifferentiated. So in, in, in grading system for, for cancer prostate, we use Gleason's grading system. In Gleason grading system, under low magnification, we see glandular pattern of a, can, of a prostate. Whenever a cancer prostate is well arranged, these all are cancer, but still it is arranged well and it looks like prosthetic tissue. This is known as grade one. The glandular pattern is losing its pattern and you can see uh, it, it looks a bit different than normal gland. See, it's undifferentiated. So this is grade one and this is grade five. So two, three, four. So we, we classify as grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five, <laughs> according to the level of differentiation. Grade one is very well differentiated. We can see the glandular pattern and grade five is undifferentiated. In the Gerson grading system, what we do is, see, uh, when we prepare the slide, we see a lot of slides, a lot of areas in slides. So we take a two sample, the grade which is occurring more frequently, we take that as sample one. Then we take another sample, sample two. Sample two means the second most common grade in that sample. Then what we do is we combine these two grade. We say Gleason sum. We combine both sample and we say three plus three is equal to six. Two most frequently occurring grades and we combine and give a Gleason sum. And if the Gleason sum is, is, is below, four, then we say it is well differentiated. If, if the Gleason sum is between five to seven, it is, we say, moderately differentiated. If it is eight to 10, it is, it is known as poorly differentiated. And the importance is the poor the differentiation is, it is highly aggressive. There's a very tricky question sometimes asked. What is the difference between three plus four, seven, and four plus three, seven? And which one is more aggressive? See here, the first sample is three. Second, second common sample is four, which is equal to seven. In the second case, you can see the first most occurring sample is four. So we always see the first sample. In these two, the four means more aggressive. So four plus three, seven is more aggressive than three plus four, seven. If you can remember this much is fine. Otherwise, at least remember, Nielsen's grading system is used for prostate cancer grading, where we give scoring according to differentiation, one to five, and we combine two scorings to identify the Gleason sum. So cancer arises from the peripheral zone. It can invade to urethra, or it can invade the bladder base, and it can also invade the rectum. But invasion of rectum is a bit late feature because of presence of fossa known as denon velar fossa. So this is the denon velar fossa. So <clears throat> the surrounding structures like like bladder base, urethra, rectum, lateral pelvic wall that can be you know, involved by cancer prostate as a local local spread. Now regarding the distant spread or metastasis. If cancer spread through lymphatic route, it will first go to pelvic lymph node. The cancer prostate will invade the pelvic lymph node first. There are a lot of pelvic lymph node. After that, obturator lymph node is most commonly affected. From there, it can go to Verco's gland. That is left supraclavicular gland. Most commonly, it spread through venous route or you can say hematogenous route. The cancer prostate, when, the, when it arrives from the peripheral zone, it can pass through the venous plexus and follow through the alternative route by a Batson vein. It will reach the internal vertebral venous plexus and can affect the vertebra. So <clears throat> bone metastasis is very common, most common. And out of all bones, Lumbar vertebrae are most commonly affected because of these connection. Cancer can also spread through normal route, 
that is internal iliac vein, common iliac vein, inferior vena cava, heart, and then to the other organs like lung. So you, you may also get a patient with a cancer prostate and lung metastasis. Whenever there is a cancer metastasis to bone, it causes osteoblastic or osteosclerotic activity. That is, this cancer cell will activate it, osteoblast, forming new bone, but these bones are very fragile and brittle, which can easily get fractured. So uh, the patient of a cancer prostate may, may present to you with back pain, especially lumbar vertebral metastasis, and they may present to you with a fracture of the lumbar vertebra and spinal nerve injuries. The most common site of development of cancer prostate is always peripheral zone around 70 to 75 percentage of cases you'll find cancer arising from peripheral zone. 69 years old male with cancer prostate, X-ray shows the sclerosis means osteoblastic activity and the collapse of thoracic 10 and 11 vertebra. Patient has a uh, vertebral metastasis. What is the root of spread? The root of the spread is prostatic vas plexus, then to the Batson vein, then to the internal vertebral plexus of vertebral venous plexus. The most common site of metastasis in cancer prostate is bone. Whenever these cancers goes to vertebra or bone, then it leads to osteoclastic activity or osteolytic. Whereas the cancer prostate causes osteoblastic or osteosclerotic. Gleason scoring is done in the case of prostatic cancer. Gleason sum up to four is well differentiated. Five to seven, five to five six seven is moderately differentiated. Eight nine ten is undifferentiated or poorly differentiated okay this is used for prostate cancer grading so cancer prostate follows through this pathway that is it will go to the prostatic venous plexus then it is communicated to internal vertebral venous plexus via batson vein so see here in the case of prostate uh, the best tumor marker is known as PSA, prostate specific antigen. These are prostatic cells, glandular cells. Okay? These glandular cells produce PSA. So, the normal function of PSA in male is liquefaction of semen. Semen is deposited ar around the cervix okay? after sexual intercourse. The semen are very thick. And these semen, the thickness of semen has to be, you know, converted to thin consistency. Thin. This <coughs> thick to thin conversion is known as liquefaction. The spermatozoa become free now from the semen and it will go to the fallopian tube. So if the prostatic normal glandular cell can produce PSA, then similarly the cancer cell, which are also arise from the glandular cell, they also can produce PSA, but the PSA value will be very, very high. Normally, it is between 2.5 to 4. This is the normal value. All male has this normal value. The cancer cells arising from this gland causes excessive production of PSA. So, increasing value of PSA may help us to diagnose cancer prostate. So th there are other tumor markers which are also you know, seen in, in cancer prostate, like prostate-specific membrane antigen, prostate cancer gene 3, uh, prostate acid phosphatase. So the most sensitive and most effective tumor marker that we use is PSA, serum PSA. So what I use is a PSA. During DRG, I failed some nodules, okay, some nodules. And you suspected that the patient might have have a cancer prostate. You done serum PSA, and this also increased. Now we are very suspicious the patient might have cancer prostate. That means it helps us in diagnosis. Also, prognosis. 
that means higher the value of PSA, worse the prognosis is. That is, if PSA value is more than 35, that usually indicate metastasis. Third one is, suppose you have diagnosed a patient as cancer prostate. You did some management that could be prostatectomy or that could be radiotherapy. Then after treatment, we do follow-up. Okay. We do a lot of investigations. We also do PSA. Suppose if the PSA value remains normal, then we think, okay, fine. There is no recurrence of cancer. But if suddenly a PSA value increases during follow-up, then it, it gives us clue, okay, the patient might have recurrence of disease. Serum PSA measurement after treatment help us to identify the effectiveness of treatment as well as it helps us to identify the uh, recurrence of cancer. Moreover, we can also do screening. Screening is a technique where we identify a disease before producing any symptoms. So usually we do DRD and PSA measurement in a patient without any symptoms. If the PSA level is increased, then you can think of, okay, fine. Let us identify whether the patient has cancer prostate or not. So these are the uses of PSA in cancer prostate. The chance of getting cancer increases when the PSA value increases. Okay. And at, at the value of 35, it is almost metastatic. Almost metastatic. Higher the value of PSA, uh, higher the chance of getting metastasis. There is a term known as PSA velocity. What is that? Suppose a patient is under regular follow-up and you are measuring PSA every year. Suppose a PSA of a patient two years back was suppose 2.5. So it is normal, right? 2.5 nanogram per ml. And then one year back, his PSA was suppose three. Still slightly increased, but not that much. Suppose now you found that his PSA become four nanogram. So here the increased value is one nanogram in one year. If a patient whose uh, PSA value increases by 0 0.75 nanogram in one year, then it is regarded as significant increase. And these patients might have cancer, even though it's within the normal range. But the one thing you should understand, the PSA is prostate specific, not the cancer specific. That means uh, PSA can be increased not only in the cancer, but also in other disease of prostate. Let me explain. The most common cause of increase in PSA is cancer prostate. But PSA can be also increased in other disease, like some benign disease, like BPH. In BPH, the PSA value usually stays normal. But if it is increased, it is usually less than 10. But still, there is a chance of increase in PSA value. Prostatitis or abscess of prostate. Prostatitis or prostatic abscess, in this case, you will find the PSA is very high as equal to cancer prostate. So how to differentiate? See, that's why don't only believe on PSA value. You have to see all the parameters. Suppose a male patient having, having difficulty in micturition, having fever, and on DRE, the prostate is, is enlarged, but painful and soft and in this case if you find PSA is very high then it is a case of prostatitis some conditions like if you do DRE and if the patient uh, immediately check PSA after DRE then it may increase because while doing a DRE the finger has has you know touched the prostate and these prostatic massage can increase the PSA so whenever you put a catheter through urethra there is a chance of you know a touching of uh, prostatic lobes, and that causes increased secretion of, of of a PSA. So you can see PSA can increase by various factors, uh, but all are related to prostate. Don't think that it is only increased in cancer. But whenever you get a patient, elderly patient, you know <clears throat> having high PSA, always think cancer as, as your first diagnosis. So PSA means prostate specific, not a cancer specific.
it it uh, liquefies the semen. It is produced by both cancer cell and normal cell. It is highly increased in prostatitis. After prostatectomy, the PSA level should fall. Should fall. Okay. So this is the false statement number D. A patient underwent prostatectomy. Under follow-up, we found bone pain. So this could be recurrence with bone metastasis. So whenever you think a patient might have recurrence, recurrence of cancer after after doing a surgery, then the biochemical marker that we use to check recurrence is PSA. Normal value of PSA less than four. So <clears throat> clinical feature can be classified as local feature feature due to locally advanced disease or metastatic disease. So local, if you see a local feature, basically they are asymptomatic. So put this is bladder. Okay, this is prostate. Cancer at the peripheral zone, you will not find any symptoms. Okay. So usually symptom is found whenever there is a locally advanced disease like patient of cancer prostate has involved the urethra or has involved the bladder neck. Now, these patients will present to you with feature of bladder outlet obstruction, that is LUTS. Whenever the cancer come near to the bladder neck or urethra, then you will find patient with hematuria. If, if you do DRE, so in early case, in very early case, a small very small cancer prostate, even the DRE is, DRE is normal in, in, uh, in T1 disease. Small cancer prostate involving the prostate only. In that case, even you'll find DRE is normal. Okay. Whenever the cancer prostate is a bit larger and you may find that the cancer, the prostate is either entirely enlarged or Will, you may find some nodules which are hard, non tender, and the surface is, is, is irregular because of those nodules. Sometimes, when you, when you remove your finger, that finger may be stained with blood because of rectal involvement. Sometimes, not always. And metastatic feature uh, the most common site of metastasis is bone. So, you will find a patient with bone pain or back pain. Sometimes, when that you know vertebra is collapsed, patient may present to you with paralysis. That means suppose this is vertebra. You know the vertebra in the vertebral canal there is spinal cord. So whenever these these cancer prostate involve the vertebra, then these vertebral these vertebra will collapse, fracture, and can cause a spinal cord injury. So Patient of a cancer prostate may come to you with back pain or the feature of a nerve weakness, a muscle weakness in the lower limb, or even paralysis due to injury of spinal cord or spinal nerves. If it goes to lung, the patient may present to you with cough, hemoptysis, chronic cough. If it goes to liver, there will be hepatomegaly and jaundice, so depending on the organ involved. And there are always a very common general. Uh, features of metastasis, those are asthenia, anorexia, anemia, and weight loss. Weight loss is very significant. It is usually more than 3 kg in 3 months or 6 kg in 6 months. So you may find a patient in very early stage. In very early stage, uh, the way to identify cancer prostate is the screening technique by doing PSA. So when the cancer is slightly in, enlarged, then you, you can feel by your finger in during DRE. And if, if it involves the surrounding structures like urethra or bladder neck, then only they will present to you as, as local features like LUTS or hematuria. They may present to you with feature of metastasis as well. Most common site of metastasis is, is bone. So always ask about the recent back pain or any any symptoms, you know, indicating of nerve compression or nerve paralysis.
the T1 T1 tumors are are tumors which are which are localized but they are so small even during DRE you will not able to find T2 tumors these tumors are slightly enlarged here you can you can feel during DRE okay obviously T3 and T4 tumors are those tumors uh, which is now involved in the surrounding surrounding organs or or you know local advancement and these tumors usually have symptoms like frequency urgency hematuria and also you know, during DRE you will be able to feel these uh, nodules obviously DRE is the most important clinical uh, examination point but but uh, you know if you are going to diagnose a cancer prostate in, in early stage you have to do DRE as well as serum PSA assessment both has to be done because I have already told you in very early stage the DRE may be normal mm, metastatic which I will explain see this one So investigation, uh, let's see, investigation for diagnosis, serum PSA, the value higher the value, higher the chance of getting cancer. If it is more than four, we always suspect patient, patient might have cancer. And uh, if it is more than 35, then it is almost diagnostic of, of, of metastatic cancer, prostate and so on. So higher the PSA value, we have uh, the suspicion that patient might have cancer. Ultrasonogram, yes, you can do that. Okay, the truss ultrasonogram is is better. Truss means transrectal root is better. And whenever you do transrectal root, we always do biopsy if there is some suspicion. So, transrectal ultrasonogram is basically done for for obviously we to see the abnormal focus of cancer, but also uh, to take a biopsy from any abnormal suspicious site. MRI of pelvis and abdomen is done for local staging. I'll show you the picture and, and, and I'll explain. So by a rectal route, we introduce ultrasonogram probe and we'll scan the prostate. This is known as transrectal ultrasonogram. So you'll get a view like this one. And you'll find a uh, hypoechoic area, hypoechoic area indicating cancer. So cancer is seen as hypoechoic area. And when we see this suspicious area, we always take biopsy. The truss is, is done for diagnosis just by, by seeing the prostate. Also, we can take biopsy. So most of the time we do truss for biopsy purpose this is the outline of prostate you can see there are multiple hypoequi those black areas indicating indi indicating suspicious cancer to confirm we can take biopsy the same setting prostate biopsy is the most diagnostic investigation of cancer prostate when to do indication is whenever you get a patient, elderly patient with high PSA value or abnormal DRE. Abnormal DRE means you got a nodules in DRE or both. You may get a patient with, with high PSA, normal DRE. You may get a patient with, with normal DRE but, but high PSA or you may get both. So whatever the abnormality is in elderly patient, if you suspect cancer, then you can do prostate biopsy how to do it so root is always transrectal uh, you, you guys may ask me so why not to do transurethral see this is prostate so can't you take biopsy from through the transurethral root just like doing turp yes we, we can take biopsy no doubt but the chance of getting cancer prostate diagnosis is become less. Why? Because cancer prostate lies in the peripheral zone. So chance of diagnosis increases whenever you take biopsy from 
transrectal root, how many specimens or cores to be taken? We have to take at least at least 10 or 12 biopsies. And if you find some abnormal nodule, you must include that nodule. So what are the ways or technique we, we can uh, take digital guided? That means during, uh, during the biopsy, we first do DRE and try to locate the location and take biopsy by the help of needle. This is known as digital guided biopsy. But better one is always truss guided. By the help of ultrasonogram, we locate the site of biopsy and then take biopsy 10 to 12 cores. Okay. We can do uh, guidance by MRI also, MRI guided. More accurate, but very expensive and not done commonly. The most common technique is transrectal ultrasonogram guided biopsy. See the picture? This is ultrasonogram probe. USC probe and here this is a needle holder so this needle holder we can put needle inside and take a biopsy from multiple sites at least at least 10 to 12 sites okay whenever whenever we do biopsy we have to check bleeding time clotting time that is bleeding profile the patient should have normal bleeding profile because you are going to puncture the prostate and these are a vascular organ if the coagulation profile is not normal, patient will bleed. And before, uh, before the doing biopsy, we ask the patient to take antibiotic at least 30 minutes before biopsy. So we give them ciprofloxacin tablet and we ask them to take some uh, you know, per rectal enema to clean the rectum before coming to biopsy. These are the prerequisite to the patient should follow. And whenever you do biopsy, there are some chance of some complications. Some are like, if you puncture the prostate, uh, it may bleed, right? There may be bleeding. There may be hematosperma because as you have punctured the prostate, after one or two days when semen is ejaculated, patient may complain of blood in semen, which is normal. Uh, there's a chance of infection, obviously, because you are puncturing through rectum and rectum contains a lot of bacteria. That's why patient has to evacuate the stool before coming to biopsy and also also taken antibiotic to, pre to prevent infections. MRI, see here, whenever you do MRI, obviously in, in T2 imaging, you'll find normal prostate. Normal prostate is, is white in color in T2 image and site of cancer you will see black in color that is hypo intense so this is the site of abnormal area in the prostate okay so uh, by seeing this one we, we can guess the patient might have cancer prostate obviously we will do biopsy to confirm nowadays we have newer newer mri techniques known as mp mri or multi-parametric mri these are very diagnostic for cancer prostate mri of abdomen and pelvis is uh, done to stage the cancer that is local staging to identify the location of cancer to know whether the cancer has involved the surrounding structure or not even we, we can see the lumbar vertebra involvement we, you can see the liver involvement that's why mri pelvis is always done to evaluate cancer prostate metastatic evaluation as usual you know what we do that is for lung metastasis we do CT scan chest or X-ray chest, we always do that. LFT to evaluate the liver function, alkaline phosphatase to screen the bone metastasis. So when to do bone scan? Number one, a cancer prostate patient, if, if they come to you with back pain or bone pain, if the patient, if the patient of cancer prostate come to you with increased alkaline phosphatase, A cancer, cancer patient with, with X-ray findings, suggestive of metastasis, like if you see some osteoblastic activities, then do bone scan. If the patient has high PSA value or high Gleason grade, high grade cancer. 
see the value more than 20 nanogram if you see a patient of cancer prostate with PSC is more than more than 20 then always do bone scan so what you see in bone scan if we see hot spot a black spot you can see uh, this patient has hot spot everywhere except in lower limb but you can see multiple hot spot in 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 vertebra uh, sternum ribs skull neck pelvis everywhere so there is a multiple metastasis due to cancer prostate these are general investigations we always do it's very easy right so transrectal ultrasonogram in cancer prostate is mainly done for taking biopsy to identify seminal vesicle invasion for a nodal invasion for extent of uh, surrounding invasion we always do mri tnm stays so this is prostate if a patient has very small cancer prostate okay localized then these are regarded as t1 t1 cancer means okay this these are cancer prostate which are localized but not diagnosed clinically that means you will not find any symptoms and you will not find any abnormal dre during dre you're not able to identify the cancers how you identify these cancers these cancers are usually identified by screening by doing psa or so if a cancer is diagnosed by urp incidental diagnosis t2 r with larger cancer prostate larger cancer prostate okay unilateral or bilateral t2 these are localized still still within within prostate localized and clinically diagnosed that is you can feel these these nodules by your finger t3 means these cancer prostate is now started to involve the structures like seminal vesicles seminal vesicle or involving the blood base or urethra so once it has it has started involving the surrounding structures like seminal vesicle you know urethra blood base so these are lo locally advanced but still within the surrounding structure of prostate is t3 what is t4 then t4 means t4 means when these cancer prostate start to involve rectum start to involve the lateral pelvic wall lateral wall then these are known as t4 disease so t3 t4 both are locally advanced disease okay both are locally advance obviously if the pelvic lymph nodes are involved then we say yes and one if not then n0 pelvic lymph node most common being obturator obturator and what is m m means m0 means no metastasis m1 means metastasis m1 is further classified as M1A, M1B, M1C. M1A means metastasis to bone. M1C means other organ, other organ, okay? Like liver, lung, like that. M1A means lymph node other than pelvic lymph node. Like you can say varicose lymph node. Just to focus on these main points. Focus on these main points.